Hello everyone and welcome to the latest workshop in our Quality Online Course Series. This month we're looking at getting students started. Really, how do students experience your course for the first time when they join it? And how do you make sure that they are set up for success from the very beginning of the course? To that end, we're going to model some of our practice today. Instead of um, hiding some of what we do when we start one of these webinars, we're going to actually record it this time so that everyone watching the archive will be able to see what we do each time. So the first thing I want to do, since we've welcomed all of you to join us, is set you up for being successful in Blackboard Collaborate today. So I want to go over a few basics for using the tool. Uh, if you have a microphone, the way to turn that on is to click the talk button once to turn your microphone on. We'll all be able to hear you. And then click it again to turn it off when you're done speaking. You can also participate via the text chat. We encourage that. Um, simply type in the text box to the left and press enter, and that will send your message to all of us. We will keep up with that text chat as we go and encourage you to ask questions as well as answer each other's questions as we go through. None of you happen to be using the mobile app today, but I do want to highlight for all of you that the mobile app is available. This, um, this is, excuse me, this app for Blackboard Collaborate lets students participate in Blackboard Collaborate sessions from an iPhone, an iPad, an Android phone or tablet, including uh, things like a Kindle Fire HD, uh, as for example, of an Android tablet. Um, it's a great way for students to be able to participate in these sessions, even if they don't have time to go sit at a computer. They can still view your content and hear you speak. They can contribute via text and voice as well. So it's a great backup for the traditional format as well as um, a good, for, a good option for participating on the go. Since none of you are using it today, I'm not going to go into detail on how to use the mobile interface. I just wanted to remind you all that it was available. So our first task then is getting to know each other a little bit better. Rather than uh, you just listening to us, <laughs> we want to make sure that you know who we are and we know who you are. So we'll start with introductions of ourselves. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. And I'm joined by my colleague, Tracy, who will introduce herself. Hello, everyone. It's Tracy Miller, and I'm the Online Teaching Coordinator at the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center. And I'm excited to get things started today. Great. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, it's your turn now. We would love to get to know all of you as well. So those of you who are in the session live now, if you would introduce yourself um, via the text chat, probably the easiest way, just uh, give, me, give us your, your name, your department, and maybe a brief summary of any experience you've had with online teaching. If you would like to use your microphone, that's great too. Uh, just let us know, and I will stop talking so that <laughs> you can go ahead and talk. I see most of you are typing there into the text chat, so I will pause and be patient for you to have a moment to do that. Great. Todd, welcome, professor in k and Kinesiology and Physical Education. And with three courses you've taught online, great. Isabel's in the School of Art, teaches art history. I know, Isabel, you've taught online extensively. Christine from Industrial and Systems Engineering, just beginning to develop a course. Excellent. Welcome. And Carrie from the University Office of Educator License and Preparation, teaching a blended online course in the summer for the first time. Your first time with online teaching is always a little, uh, I wouldn't say scary, a little intimidating maybe. Um, so I'm glad that you're here to join us and help get your students this summer off on the right foot. I do want to introduce uh, some etiquette for today, just so that we make sure that we, we're all working together in the best way possible. 
If you do want to use your microphone, please raise your hand. Obviously, raising your hand <laughs> physically isn't going to help. I can't see you. But if you click the hand button that is above our list of names and actually just below your name in the participant list, that will raise your hand virtually so that Tracy and I will know that you'd like to use your microphone. Once you've done that, please wait to click the talk button until uh, we've asked you to volunteer or asked you to share whatever you're, you're dying to share with us. That way we don't talk over each other and we can all hear everything going on. In the meantime, we do welcome you to, uh, to chat and converse via the text chat at any time. Tracy and I will tag team, keeping track of what's going on in the chat area to try to respond ourselves. But we also encourage you to reply to each other. And as a matter of etiquette, if you use the at symbol in front of uh, someone's name, um, that's kind of a, a note to that person directly. It's a takeoff on Twitter where all the handles use at in front of a name. But that way, if you're replying to something a specific person said, it keeps the threads of the conversation tighter. So my example there said, at Tracy, thanks for joining me, so that she knows it's a message for her. Although thank you to all of you for joining me as well. And then if you do agree with someone, a nice um, uh, practice, an easy way to do so, is to use plus one. And it simply says you can use plus one in general to plus one the last thing, or I could say, plus one to um, Isabel, or plus one about the tip that you just gave, plus one for uh, using announcements in Blackboard, I don't know. Um, just to show a quick agreement, it's like liking it on Facebook or plus one on Google Plus, a quick way to agree and give kudos to someone else, a nice way to recognize each other throughout the session. We also have a few tips for you to be successful. We do recommend in online sessions like this one that you minimize the distractions around you if possible. So turn off, uh, turn phones to silent or try to be in a room where you can really focus uh, instead of having background noise or the television running. Um, that helps you focus on the presentation. We also recommend that while you can take notes as we go, you can also leave that, offload that processing for later because there will be a recording available of this and you can refer back to it at any time in order to uh, review something that you missed or something you, a resource you wanted to find, for example. We definitely want to encourage you to ask questions of us or of each other and to answer questions from each other as well. Because I think the key for all of us to be successful today is to share your own thoughts and ideas and experiences so that we can learn from each other instead of uh, just from us. We, we're not the end all be all of online teaching. So are there any questions then before we get started? I'll check to see if anyone's typing anything in the text chat. It looks like not. Excellent. So our objectives for today, we have uh, just a couple of things we hope that you will walk away with. One is that you will understand and be able to explain the importance of the, the course introduction, that initial experience for students in an online course. That you'll be able to help students feel connected, and we'll talk about what we mean by connected as well. That you'll help students understand the purpose of your online course and the structure of it. And that you can provide students with the information that's essential for them to be successful in an online course. Uh, I hope that that sounds good for you. It's a lot to uh, get started with, but I think it will have a, a really dramatic impact on your online courses and on your students in your online courses. To get started with today, though, we have a little bit of an activity. I'd like to know, what do you do on the first day of a face-to-face -face class? When you're meeting with your students for the first time, what do, you, um, what do you do during that class session? You can post suggestions in the text chat, or you can raise your hand for permission to use your microphone. I want to recognize Isabel. Thanks for the plus one uh, <laughs> way to use the, um, the syntax, I guess, the, <laughs> the conventions of our space. Todd, you say the first day is syllabus day. Excellent. I think that's probably true for many people. 
uh, Isabel, introductions, discuss the course outline, the syllabus, general logistics, it sounds like. Got a couple more of you still posting your introductions or your, your comments. Christine, you introduce yourself, expectations of the course, the syllabus. Uh, Carrie, much of the same, go over the syllabus and the course expectations, introduce uh, one another, and a little bit of introductory content. Wow, you guys are good. You, you kind of covered exactly what's on our list of <laughs> what we think most faculty do on the first day. And that includes things like introducing yourself, giving an overview of the course, covering the syllabus, and particularly any policies that apply to students in the course. And then often, uh, depending on time or your, your own inclination, some sort of an initial activity, either having students introduce themselves, doing an icebreaker, reviewing something that uh, is prerequisite that they need to know for the course, may have forgotten from a previous course, or some introductory content, a, a short lecture of some sort to get them excited and, and ready for the rest of the course. So there's nothing. Absolutely, by the way, nothing wrong with this list. So we're not setting this up to say, but there is a better way. This is typical of what we do in a face-to-face -face course because it helps students understand what the course is about. It helps them see where they're going in the course. And it helps to generate that excitement for getting started. The lesson here is that online courses are really no different. And so that initial experience into an online course for students really should accomplish some of the, the same things. And we encourage you to look at your online courses from a student perspective when you're thinking about that initial online student experience. So when students come into an online course, they're looking really for three things, with the acronym of ONE, by the way, O-N-E. They're looking for things that tell them about the organization, the what's, when's, why's, how's um, of a course. The navigation of the course, where can they find things, where, where will you be posting things? And then establishing the, the structure of the course. What's the relationship between you and them, between each other? How are they connected to the course, the content? How does the content connect to their field? Generally, how parts of the course all fit together? So if you think about those three things when you come into a course for the first time, or if you try to imagine yourself coming into your own course for the first time. Think about those three factors from the student's perspective. So what we've put together is our own list of what um, we feel are the principles for introducing a course to students. Now, I'll point out that today we're specifically talking about an online course, but really, these could apply to any course. Um, these are entirely of our own devising. So um, that's not necessarily a, a, a definitive answer for what students, what you should do or what students should get on the first day of class. But it's our interpretation of what we normally do and how you can um, extrapolate that into some general ideas of what to do in an online course. So when you're introducing your course to students for the first time, we feel there are really five goals. You want to get students to connect. Uh, you want to generally have be welcoming, let them know that you, you care about them, about the course, about their success. You want to help students understand the purpose and goals of the course. Help them understand the structure and flow, how the course will unfold across the semester. You want to set some expectations, policies, rules, um, let them know what they'll need to do as part of the course, and help them be successful in the course so that they can be confident that they'll be able to, well, succeed, to finish the course in a, a positive way. As we go through the rest of this um, session then, we'll go through each of those goals in more detail and provide some examples of what that will look like in a particular, in an online course. So our first goal then is getting students to connect. And that's a fairly vague statement, getting students to connect. So I want to break that down a little bit more specifically. Uh, if you've attended any of our earlier workshops in this series on quality online courses, 
you may have seen this diagram before. This is the, the really it's the, the interaction diagram. How do students, how are the components of a, a course related to one another? And usually what you're going for is to have students interact with faculty themselves and content. At the introduction of a course, at the very beginning, what you really want to do is establish very early how students will be connected to you and how they will be connected to each other. And again, to make them feel connected, research into student retention, whether it's face-to-face -face or online, looks, uh, has determined that feeling connected to someone, feeling that someone knows that you're there in a the course, and cares about the fact that you're there and that you're successful is one of the, the most important factors, one of the most defining factors in whether students complete a course or stay at an institution. So establishing this connection early in an online course is really important because it's easy for online students to feel like they are alone and that there's no one out there for them to relate to and that there's no one out there for who's really aware of them. So one of the, the ways you can do this from the very beginning of a course is to establish a welcoming and informative page for your course entry point. Uh, this example here comes from actually my course in the fall. I taught a course on program evaluation. And the landing page here includes some basic information about the course, the description, some information on how to get started, specifically uh, the steps to get started, the learning objectives, statements about disability, very general information. Uh, at the right, I have the meeting dates, the specific meetings that we'll be having throughout the course, whether face-to-face -face or online. And then uh, I also have right up front at the bottom there information about me, how to contact me, where uh, via email, phone, by my office, as well as some, uh, a tip that email is my preferred method of contact. So right up front, when students enter the course, they can see that uh, I'm a presence, they can see how to connect with me, and there's a lot of information at their fingertips about this course. Another great strategy is to use video. And we'll actually have a few practices here, I think, <laughs> that incorporate video in some guise. But here, at the very beginning of the course, if you record a short video of yourself, uh, you can welcome students personally. So here, this is from uh, our director, Jason Rohde, and I really want to draw your attention to the right there where he has his video, The Course Welcome, and he uses this as an opportunity to very personally and very personably welcome students to let them know what the course is about and let them know a little bit about himself right up front. Uh, you can record something like this easily with either uh, a webcam on your computer or um, I believe Jason used, I know I used in my online course, my, my cell phone. I took video on my, my smartphone and then um, uploaded it into the course so that it was available for the students to watch. Very easy to do with fairly common tools now. Beyond just video, though, you actually have a lot of options for how you introduce yourself. And here we have a, an introduction for Tracy, where she shares, uh, again, basic information about herself professionally and how to contact her. She shares some professional background. How did she end up the instructor of this course, and why is she an authority on the subject? Um, she shares some information on her instructor's role, what type of approach she's taking to teaching the course, and some communication expectations. Very specifically how to contact her and when she will contact back and how soon she will contact back. You can also include more personal information in here if you're comfortable, not super personal, but professionally personal. Uh, maybe some hobbies that you have, uh, as we did actually in our introductory paragraphs earlier in this session. A little bit about who you are to round you out. You aren't just someone at the front of the room, or in this case, at the other side of Blackboard but you are a real person with, with thoughts and interests. And I don't know how much students always know that or um, care maybe, 
but it's a great way to start connecting to students about shared interests. Um, I normally share things like uh, I'm an avid reader. I read a lot of science fiction. Uh, I make jewelry as a, a craft hobby. Uh, particularly love chain mail, and uh, I've worked with hot glass some, which is exciting but a little dangerous. Things like that, which are um, personal to me, it makes me a real person, but they're not my private personal life. That's optional, really. Um, and everyone has their own style as to whether or not they care to share things like that. But it helps you set up a, a philosophy in the course and a, a culture in the course of being real and authentic um, instead of distant. And it helps students feel like they're a member. Another good way to have students feel like they are part of something is to have students introduce themselves. Often this would happen on a discussion board, someplace public where students can see each other's introductions. Um, and you can provide us with a prompt here. We have an icebreaker around uh, identity. Who are you uh, in your life and what physically represents that? Um, that's not, of course, the only way to do this. You could simply ask students to write a little biography about themselves or share something specific to the course. Uh, tell us about some time when you've worked with this in the past, with this content that we're going to cover, or share what you think about this. Uh, having students, though, introduce themselves and then comment on each other, again, starts forming that larger community of learners. So I, everyone's been quiet so far, but I'd love to hear from you. Um, what have you done online to help students get to know you? Or what have you done to help students get to know each other? Uh, or if you don't have something you've done online, what have you done face to face that you might be able to transfer into an online environment? You can either raise your hand or maybe post something into the text chat. Excellent. At least one person is typing. That makes me feel good. <laughs> Ooh, no two. All right, we'll hold off a second and wait for those responses to come in. Talented is challenge competitions like Pac-Man where students post the scores via discussion board. Interesting. If you can find something that students can do competitively, it's a great way to uh, engage them. Students want to be involved then. It's a great idea. Isabel, you have students introduce themselves in the voice of their pet. Interesting. This is what my pet thinks about me. <laughs> this is an interesting and creative idea. Plus, you got a plus one from Christine. Awesome. And Isabel also suggests having them peruse the textbook and choose some of the works there to discuss. Excellent. Uh, my, for my last online course, I actually had a face-to-face -face session at the beginning of the semester. So I had students introduce themselves in person. You could also have them introduce themselves online like this with text chat or with um, camera and voice would be even better if they could introduce themselves that way. But I had them introduce themselves with what's something that I'll remember about you. I got everything from uh, one of the students and his wife were going to be having a baby very soon. Um, one person told me that she was featured in the, um, what's the, oh, uh, in the Vitamix. She, <laughs> she was featured in the Vitamix uh, cookbook back in the, the early 90s. Uh, very, very interesting things that I, I learned about the students, and it helps me remember them. When I went back to grading them online, I, I remembered, oh yeah, that's the one who is having a baby. I wonder how his wife is doing. Um, but it made me feel connected to the students, too. Plus, they had a lot of fun with what, what, doesn't, what will she remember about me? How can I stand out? The second area we're going to look at then, the second goal of introducing your course, one of the, the um, things that you're trying to accomplish, is to help students understand the purpose and goals of the course. We do this a lot in face-to-face -face courses. Welcome to 
X, 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 X course. Um, and this course is about these things. We're going to study this, and it relates to this field, or it's important because of, and it's important to make sure that we include that as well in our online courses, too. You can do this, again, um, through the syllabus, but you can also do it just within text directly in Blackboard. So that's a little bit easier for students to find. Uh, it's actually, for me, it was part, the description was part of the welcome page. But in the course information, I included a short paragraph here on um, what the course is about. And this is actually part of a longer discussion on why the course is important to the students studying this field. It was a graduate course. And many of them felt that evaluation wasn't really an important course for them. So I was trying to persuade them as to why that was. You can also introduce the course purpose, again, with a video. So here's a screenshot of Jason's course again, where he's telling them how the students, we left the captions on so you can actually see what he said. Now this course builds directly upon those processes. Uh, he's relating this course to an earlier course that the students took. So based on that, now we're going to talk about this, focusing on something different. But showing that purpose. And by doing it via video, again, he's increasing his presence within the course, his social presence. Students can feel like they're, he's talking to them and feeling connected. And then my favorite way from the course I taught, I'm getting students to uh, understand the purpose of the course was by asking them directly to reflect on it. So here, their first discussion board post, I had some very basic questions. Um, you know, look at the definition, uh, and how does it relate to your, ex your own experience? Uh, and then question three I really like too, you've been asked to take this course for a reason. Based on what we've learned about the definition of the field, why is this important to you? What is the what is the role of this in your everyday not well not your everyday work, but in in the field in the positions that you're seeking? How does this actually relate to you? And trying to give them then a sense of purpose beyond why I think the course is important to them. Why do why do they see? And I I got a lot of great responses to this. Uh, I think most of them were things like. Um, I have several students who were school librarians who thought evaluation was the dumbest thing that they would have to take. And doing this activity, they started thinking about what evaluation really meant and realized that most of what they do is actually some form of evaluation. And they hadn't thought about it that way. And I had them hooked then. They knew why they needed this course. They knew what the purpose of it was, and they knew what they were going to learn through it. It was uh, a serendipitous activity, but it's based on the fact that I know that students often struggle with not wanting to take the course and not seeing the relevance. So having them actually come up with that relevance uh, worked out really, really well. So feel free to, if you have any suggestions about other ways to uh, help students understand the purpose of the course beyond uh, the clear purpose statement or a video on the purpose or having students themselves share their purpose, uh, feel free to type those in the text chat. I'm going to actually swap with Tracy now, and she's going to come over and take over the helm for the rest of the workshop. Hello, everyone. This is so interesting because normally Stephanie and I are in different rooms when we do these things, but we're in the same building, and now we're actually in the, the same room together. So. Um, for a little bit of time, I will actually look like Stephanie because I'm using her computer. Um, but that's okay. I don't mind that at all. Um, let's take a look. I don't see anything new in the text chat area. But what I want to start to talk about is why it's so important for the students to understand the, uh, the structure and the flow of the course um, pretty early on. And um, I think we've talked about this before, but some of you might have thought, well, okay, why are we doing getting started as actually the last um, workshop in the series? And that's because we really need to understand the structure and flow of the course before we can um, introduce it to our students. 
so now that we've gone through all that and we understand the structure and flow of the course, it's really important that we share that with the students. Okay, let's see if this thing's moving now. There we go. Okay, so uh, another thing that we've been talking about, if you've been following along with our online um, series here, is the process of alignment. And so we want to make sure everything um, aligns, our uh, objectives align with our assessments and our course activities. And so we've actually made the suggestion of creating a table. And so here's where you can actually share this table with your students. And this is in the form of a comprehensive schedule. And you can see in the schedule that there are very clearly marked dates for each unit. Um, if there's any meeting times, those are clearly indicated so that students can prepare for those um, maybe live sessions or even face-to-face -face sessions, depending on your course. Um, kind of a really brief statement on the topics that will be covered each week. Um, and then assignments and due dates. Again, this is just letting the students know in a really simple manner um, what's coming up without giving them too much information um, that just might seem um, overbearing and confusing at first. So this is just one example, and this is actually from um, Stephanie's course. Um, but I thought I'd provide you with a different example, because we're not always saying that this is the only way you can do things. Um, there's always a variety of ways you can kind of provide your students. Oops, sorry, it jumped ahead of me. I wasn't patient enough with the screen. Um, there's always, you know, depending on what you want to do, there's different ways that you can provide your students. This has a little bit more detail than what Stephanie's had, but, you know, it, again, it just depends on um, what you'd like the students. Oh, who thinks, oh, it's Stephanie because she's in there as me now. I'm like, why did I say I think mine is better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stephanie's is a little clearer. I, I, I'll give her that. Less detail, less might be more in this case, right? So this is just giving the students an idea of what's coming and how they can plan out um, and maybe time manage their own schedule because they know maybe um, some more work is coming up and they need to make some time for that. So getting a little creative, though, and helping your uh, students understand the structure and flow is to create a course tour. And this is actually an example of the course tour that we did uh, for the MOOC that we developed with Greg Long. And basically, it was just a screencast kind of directing students through um, how each week of the MOOC was going to go, um, what they could expect, how to navigate around it. Um, and so we also left the closed captioning on to show you that literally what he's describing in this is that you're going to take a little tour of the, um, the course so that you have a sense of how things are set up. And that's exactly what the course tour is uh, meant to do. And, you know, it can seem kind of overwhelming, but it's really a, a simple thing to do. It doesn't have to be a video. Um, maybe it's just a PowerPoint where you're kind of just doing some screenshots and um, pointing out what different parts of the screen needs for navigation purposes. Um, this is sort of, yeah, Jing is a great tool for this one. You can see right up front that there's a welcome area. That's where we want the students to start with. And hopefully that will begin their tour, begin their journey through the course. Um, so they feel really comfortable and uh, not so lost as things start to unfold. Are there any questions or any ideas, actually, on uh, things that you've done uh, to kind of um, introduce the structure to your students in an online course? Have I inspired anyone with ideas on how they might introduce the structure to their course? They're very quiet out there. Oh, Todd uses a similar table. Todd, do you find that the table helps you organize your thoughts, too, as you're creating it?
I know that when um, we've created experiences, courses, um, here at faculty development, we often find that when we start looking at how things are structured or how we expect things to flow, uh, that's when we find gaps and, and we can fill them in. So Todd said yes and more to make sure it is consistent from week to week. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Consistency is so important for the students. Uh, Carrie said she's used the table and made a time weekly to send out an announcement as to what we are covering. What is due this week? Yes, so it's, it's not only important to do right from the beginning um, as kind of an overview, but even week to week um, really helps the students out. Okay, so another recommendation that we have is to set expectations with your students right from the beginning. And um, this can kind of unfold in a variety of ways. Um, the first one is that you want to explain your, your policies to your students. This is something that we even mentioned that you do in the first day of a face-to-face -face class. And so you want to kind of go over maybe your late policy, um, any other institutional policies that you'd like to talk about. So in this example here, we've just provided some text within the course explaining our late policy. Um, incomplete policy, and then even some institutional policies like the academic integrity policy. Um, these can even be um, more detailed, you know, depending on what kind of policy or what discipline we're talking about. Um, but again, just having a place for students to understand these policies and pointing them out immediately as the class starts. Um, so there's not any, um, you're reducing conflicts that might arise later in the course by introducing it early. Policies can also sound a little bit like um, etiquette, and we did talk about etiquette at the beginning of this um, workshop, but here's an example of um, some appropriate etiquette for a discussion board. And this is something that I actually found on Blackboard, but I thought it worked out pretty well, that um, these are some great things that you just want to describe for your students up front so that they understand that you have some expectations um, when they participate in a discussion board. Uh, maybe it's other etiquette discussions on the type of email you'd like. Um, or how you'd like your students to interact with one another. Um, but setting up those etiquette expectations up front um, can, again, alleviate confusion and um, a lot of discussion later on when they don't quite understand what they did wrong. Um, another thing is to set expectations up for participation. And so We've been really clear in the syllabus explaining that class participation is worth 150 points. Um, but we've also really um, had some detail about what we consider class part participation to be. Excuse me. Um, we want it to be active and enthusiastic. Um, it's going to demonstrate understanding. Um, we want folks asking thoughtful questions. Um, it's, this is saying a little bit more than we're just expecting attendance, right? We're expecting active participation, and that's what your um, 150 points are going to be built on. Um, we also mentioned down here on the bottom that online um, synchronous sessions are part of the participation grade. And again, it depends on um, what your rules are and how you're using um, perhaps live synchronous sessions. Um, if it's something like an office hour and it's more op optional, then you know you want to state that it, it, you don't. It's not part of your class participation point. However, this is um, the expectation of when you can attend. And in this case, um, there's even sort of a policy in here. If you miss an online synchronous class session, it is your responsibility to notify the instructor in advance. So 
you know, they know, well, I didn't think I needed to let you know that I wasn't going to be there. Oh, no, that was an ex expectation, and it's been an ex expectation that you've known uh, since day one. Pardon me, this thing is moving slowly. Okay, so right here I have um, our next goal, which was how we can help students to be successful as they're getting started in the course. And so um, if you would all take a minute and read through this um, screenshot that I provided here, and let me know if you how you feel about it. What are your initial reactions? Um, and put yourself in the student's perspective. So you're a student and you've just entered the course and this is what you, yes, Isabel, it is kind of small. I should have, I should have made it a little larger. Maybe that's part of it though, right? It's kind of uh, lost. But I'll read the beginning of it for you. It says, the catalog describes this course as an overview of the theoretical issues and trends in instructional technology and their impact on the effective selection, design, utilization, and evaluation of instructional media. Again, you're just entering the course and you want your students to be successful. Gary's typing something in. Carrie said she Kari said she wouldn't know what to do next. Right, it's, it kind of stops things, doesn't it? Too impersonal or robotic. You don't feel connected to me, do you? Okay, so this is sort of our example of um, maybe what happens, but um, how are we going to improve this and how are we going to help students um, know where to go next and feel a little bit more connected. Carrie said the second paragraph emphasizes how potentially demanding the course and the instructor are. Yes, and um, I intentionally capitalized advanced because I've actually seen that in some introduction areas. Um, and it, we all know capitalization means you're shouting, and so you do, you, you feel sort of intimidated um, when you see this, um, when you first enter a class, and maybe don't feel so welcomed. So we're going to give you some suggestions on how we can maybe improve this a little bit. First of all, we're going to provide specific steps on how to get started. And so we've actually shown this in some of our earlier screens, our similar one. In this case, there is literally a welcome start here area. This is also the entry page in Blackboard, so this will be the first thing that students see. And so if for some reason they missed the, um, the getting started down below, or maybe it's the second time they're coming in the course and they've moved around a little bit, they always know where to kind of go back and get started. Um, up in that left-hand navigation menu. And then, of course, there's lots of detail on what to do to really get started. Watch the course orientation, um, the, the tour that we actually introduced earlier. Um, view the information posted in course content. Watch the course welcome from your instructor. Um, download the syllabus. There's definitely things that you can kind of um, work through at this point and you don't feel so lost. Um, also, down below, the following tutorial explains how to navigate Black, the Blackboard Management Learning System. Um, so this is giving them even more um, knowledge about how to just kind of move through Blackboard. Does this seem more helpful? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm drying up here. Great. Okay. Uh, another tip is it's important to provide the students with 
the technical requirements that they'll need to be successful in this course. And again, this is just some text that's been added to the information area of the course. And it lets students know what their minimal technical requirements will be and a little bit about how they're going to be used. And that will really help alleviate some stress that students feel like there's something that they, they haven't quite acquired yet and they're going to, to need to learn how to do something or they're going to need to um, buy some equipment. So in this case, most of the technical requirements are um, through Blackboard. And it clearly states that it's going to be used extensively. Um, that they need regular access to the internet. So up front, don't tell me you can't um, get access to a computer or the internet because you've been told up front that this is a requirement. Um, and some helpful information on how they can get assistance. Um, some information, this is almost gets back to the, the policies and expectations that you are required to check your email regularly. Um, and then, of course, a little bit information on how the Blackboard Collaborate will be used for the live synchronous sessions. This is actually almost an exact cut and paste out of what I sent out as my reminder email. Um, just letting you know that Collaborate is what we're using and you'll need um, speakers for sure, headphones if you'd like to speak, all those sort of things, just letting the students know ahead of time um, what technology will be required of them. There could be more. Um, you may require them to have a um, microphone because you are going to expect them to speak or do a presentation of sorts. And so they're, um, you know, you just want to give them that information up front. So we always, in this quality online series, we've tried to wrap things up by talking about how this works with Quality Matters. And Quality Matters, this is considered general standard number one. And we've kind of broken out what we've talked about today into this ginormous sentence. So I will read it for you. Quality online courses help students understand the course, including the purpose, structure, policies, etiquette, and how to get started. Help students feel connected to their instructor and classmates and inform students of prerequisite knowledge, technical skills, and technology tools required to be successful. And so again, we've wrapped up this kind of huge general standard into a um, one sentence that really we feel says it all. But because we've taken a really personal approach this time, we'd like to talk about our favorite practices a little bit. So these are the ones that we think um, are sort of the most important and will really set your students out on the right foot. Um, we like to create a welcoming and informative page as the course entry point. This is a little bit different. The default on Blackboard is to go to the module page. Um, so if anyone is interested in knowing how to change that, just reach out to us and we'll be happy to uh, give you those instructions. Um, introduce the course purpose and structure. Um, introduce the course purpose and structure early um, and make sure that um, student, it really makes sense for the student. Uh, create a course tour. We like the, the videos. Um, we'd love to hear more about your creativity and how you'd like to do a course tour maybe in a different way. It could be a scavenger hunt. Um, it could be a syllabus quiz. Um, there's a, a kind of some different ways that we've heard about. Um, make sure you introduce yourself. Again, decide on what level of professional personal that you'd like to use to introduce yourself. Um, provide specific steps to get started. Um, really, specific steps. One, two, three, four. This is what you need to do to get started and uh, get students on the right track. And then provide students ways to interact with each other early and give them etiquette expectations um, so that they're not reading your mind or each other's minds, um, that they're, they're following your expectations 
and being really professional yet friendly um, as they interact with one another in, the, in this environment. Yeah. Okay, in summary, as we launch into the last few minutes, what we have talked about today, I'm just waiting for the screen to flip over for you, there we go, um, is to get students to connect, let them know you care, help students understand the purpose and goals of the course, help students understand the structure and flow, set expectations for the students, and help students to be successful in the course. I want to allow for a few minutes for any last minute comments or questions. Um, we're both anxiously waiting to hear um, what you thought of today's presentation or your key takeaway. But again, as always, um, I'm going to open the screen up to give you some contact information for us. Um, there are lots of ways to contact us. And I, looking at my audience today, it looks like a, um, a lot of familiar um, faces and names. So you really know how to get a hold of us. And I'm waiting for questions, comments. Okay, Christine's got a question or comment. Christine thought it was helpful, especially creating a tour and developing an easy and informative start page. Yes, and, and it really is fairly easy to do. And of course, once you do it once, you can just keep using some of that information. I see Isabel's working on something. Well, let me turn the recording off at this point, and we'll still keep questions flowing. <laughs>